Tristan Wirfs got a big old bag of money. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this delayed WTSP episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow on Twitter. I am James Yarko at Jarko underscore Bucks. He is Evan Klosky at E. Klosky WTSP. We are your credential members of the media covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I am the deputy editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com. Evan is on 10 Tampa Bay and at 10 Tampa Bay.com. And Locked On Bucks is here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everyday or for that. I thank you. One of the ways you can support the show is become a Locked On Bucks insider. You're going to get news, rumors, updates, general thoughts, one-on-one conversations with me via text message. No ads or anything like that. Just legit text messages. Go to jointsubtext.com slash Locked On Bucks or click the link in the show notes to become an insider today. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Yaya Diaby suffered an ankle injury at practice on Thursday, and we find out Evans' top training camp performers so far. But we have to start with the big news that everyone has been waiting for, and that is the contract extension for Tristan Wirfs officially being done. It was announced Thursday morning the Buccaneers and Wirfs agreed to a five-year, $140.63 million deal, making him the highest-paid lineman in NFL history and the highest-paid player in Buccaneers history. Uh, This deal ensures that Wirfs will be with the team for the next six years, and over the course of those six years, he will make $158.869 million dollars there were some conflicting reports as recently as sunday where there were those saying that the deal was getting close there were others saying that it was miles apart turned out to be the former uh and we kind of knew that based on what jason light and tristan worse had each said but evan jason light said that if they were able to bring back baker and mike and levante and antoine and tristan that there was going to be another boat parade so when's that going to be I don't know, but Jason Light owes us a boat parade. That's all I know. He said, if anyone's got a boat, let him know. Uh, there are many in the Tampa Bay area that have a boat. So, um, yeah, I, I, I believe that he's going to have to hit up Tristan for who's going to cover the beer for everybody. But, yeah, it's hopefully it's in February of, uh, of next year, right? Yeah, well, I mean, they should do the celebratory boat parade for this, and then, you know, that kind of gives them a rehearsal Correct. in February. I mean, that's that's how that works, right? They should do it during the bye week. You're right. Yeah, I don't know. The bye week week may be uh, uh, coming off of a little bit of a rough stretch. But, you know, Tristan, you know, we we knew he was going to be up there, right? We knew it was going to be one of the top uh, offensive linemen contracts in the NFL um, you know, is there a, a player really in the NFL? I know Jason Light kind of said it, but is is there a player more deserving of this level of money than than Tristan Wirfs, especially being you know, a non quarterback? You know, and and those guys are getting stupid, ridiculous money anyway because they're quarterbacks. But I mean, this was this was really a long time coming, and and in my opinion, very well deserved. Look. Offensive linemen, they do not grow on trees. And, you know, we thought that the Buccaneers had something cooking, in, you know, coming out of 2020, right, uh, with Marpet and Jensen and Wirfs just got there. And Donovan Smith had his, like, best season. Um, and and naturally over time, you, you know, Mar- Marpet – retires unexpectedly jensen has a career ending injury um you lose a couple of guys to to free agency and you have to rebuild the whole thing again but tristan is one of those guys who is on a trajectory of having a bust there in canton and he's 25 years old he's already 
earned two all pro selections. He's been to three pro bowls. He has a Super Bowl ring to his name. He just earned a captaincy last season from his teammates. He's a guy who, even with all the negotiating that was going on, where you have guys like Jordan Love who didn't practice, C.D. Lamb who isn't with the team, Jamar Chase isn't practicing, that Worth still felt it was necessary to be out there and do whatever he could and essentially pulled himself out of 11 on 11 stuff. But he he is just not in his nature to not be with the guys. He was there all off season training, even though he wasn't part of OTAs during his press conference. He said he was the, the SpongeBob meme looking outside the window where they're all having fun outside and, and he's just on the inside. But um, that he is just a good dude uh, beyond being arguably the best uh, left tackle in the game. Uh, you, you know, s- certainly a top three guy, but this is money well spent. And the fact that the Bucks got a fifth year is really a huge win because this is a guy, there aren't many of them, but when you have a 25 year old left tackle who's built like him, you're willing to put down as many years as possible on that mm-hmm. because he, you just know that you ain't going in a different direction. Let me lock this in and let's move accordingly into the future. And now the, the Buccaneers are are pretty much set up until 2026. This is like a two-year window of we are all gas, no brakes. And you, I mean, they just you look into next year, you got to worry about guys like Chris Godwin, Levante again, who's who's under the Rondé Barber treatment, and Joe Tryanchenka, Anthony Nelson, Greg Gaines. It's going to be a much different type of offseason next year and what this team can do also with probably more money in the bank. Yeah, well, and it's it's perfect that you brought that up because I had noted, like, I think now the attention kind of shifts to Chris Godwin. And you mentioned some of the names that I had listed, but then I'll throw out a couple of others. You know, Sua Opeta, who just suffered a, a season-ending ACL injury. We don't know what that could have been, but, you know, if Ben Bredesen, works out he is only on a one-year deal you have chase edmonds that that could be a free agent sterling shepherd kj Britt. these are these are on top of the guys that you've already mentioned these are all potentially really important players for this buccaneers team and they're all set to hit free agency next year so i i think now the at least the fan attention you know everybody's been kind of enthralled by the tristan worth saga I think a lot of the attention is going to turn to Chris Godwin and whether or not Jason Light can work a deal out with him. There there really hasn't been much talk about, you know, a potential deal from either side. And who knows what what Godwin's intentions are, if, if he wants to stay or if he wants to hit free agency and test that market and see what he can get elsewhere. But, you know, you, you mentioned kind of a, a two year all gas, no breaks window. Godwin's a pretty important part of that window. And and you'd have to think that Jason's going to do as much as he can in order to get him to come back. You would think, you know, look, Mike Evans was just in this position last year, right? Mm -hmm. This is a totally new offense. And let's see how all the pieces work out. Now, if you think back to the Rams in 2021, when they won it all, you know, they had pieces like Cooper Cup, um, Odell Beckham Jr., Robert Woods, uh, Tyler Higby was their tight end still. I'm missing one other receiving option. Oh, um, Van Jefferson had his best season in the league that year. Um, but but since then, they've kind of, you know, trimmed it down, right? Mm-hmm. It's really become Cup, Puka Nakua. Higby's hurt right now, but the offense is operating under a very a, a quality versus quantity. Um, so I say that in a sense of if we're trying to judge, we don't know anything about Liam Cohen at this moment, and that's why we got to figure out the offense. But if they're able to take some of the funds from Chris, what they would pay him, and put them into some other peripheral pieces, 
that that might be the decision that's best for the team. But I know that Jason would love to keep Chris. I know that Chris would love to be in town. So th there's a mutual interest there. And if they can find a compromise, they will. But, you know, Chris has to prove it. Not not so much in the yards. Like, he's always produced. This dude is always produced. It's more so like, can you can you find the end zone? Uh, that That's really what it's going to come down to for him. But, yeah, I, as, as much as there are, like, you know, Chris Levante, the Anthony, JTS, KJ, like, as much as those guys are important pieces, to have, like, the core figured out is really – a huge deal going into next year because you're not trying to like make over your whole team and not to mention, by the way, you get a whole draft again, which I would assume they're going to invest in another guard. They're going to go right back to the offensive line. They'll probably get another linebacker and those will be kind of two voids filled within the draft. And then you can use some money to get the other pieces who help. Um, there's a lot of evaluating that now has to be done. So, in my opinion, whatever funds they have next year should be going to an outside linebacker, an edge, something along those regards. If, if you listen to me on Locked On Bucks, you know I've been hammering that for like a year and a half now, and, and I still bang that drum. Well, speaking of which, we did have the Tristan Wirfs deal, and that was some really good news. But then there was some really bad news that followed shortly after. That is coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. If you want to catch an upcoming Rays game, tickets against the Orioles started just $16. Then against the Astros, you can get tickets as low as $15. Right now, you can also get Buccaneers regular season tickets for as low as $48. And week one against the Commanders start at just $79. And all of those prices I just mentioned feature game times all in pricing. So there won't be any surprises when you get to check out. You can wait until the last minute when prices will drop by as much as 60%. Or you can get them now knowing that you have Game Time's lowest price guarantee. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listen review every single day. Every day, just make sure you are coming back tomorrow. We will go be going live on YouTube in the early afternoon. Make sure that you are subscribed on YouTube with those notifications turned on so you know when I go live. But I've had some great mailbag questions roll in, including who I think is the most underrated and the most overrated players in the NFL. I'm really excited to answer that one. But in the meantime, if you want to hear the latest news from around all of sports, but you want more than just national narratives, and you don't want to hear about the biggest stories with fake, made-up, manufactured, scripted, screaming at one another, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today streams 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everyone was all excited about the Tristan Wirfs deal. I had insiders blowing up my phone. There were Twitter reactions. I had group chats going off. Even my Titans-loving best friends like, man, your guy got paid. But then we all got sucker punched right in the gut when the news broke that edge rusher Yaya Diaby was carted off the field with, at the time, it was reported a left leg injury. Uh, Diaby underwent x-rays after practice. Those were normal. He underwent an MRI, showed no serious injury, another sigh of relief for everyone. But it was reported that it is a high ankle sprain for Yaya Diaby. Rick Stroud had tweeted out that the plan now is to get him ready for week one against the Washington commanders and that he is not expected to play in the preseason. But Evan, the bucks dodged a huge bullet here when the guy that they're relying on to anchor the edge rush 
was carted off the field. And it looks like it's just going to be kind of a, you know, the, the stereotypical four to six week high ankle sprain window. If I had to rank off season hype from players of people that they've talked up, Yaya Diaby might be one. The fact, like everyone's saying how he, you know, including himself saying this, he lived in the facility. He had to go find somewhere on Sundays because the facility closed. Um, like uh, just time, like four, four or five players in this training camp alone that we've heard from have mentioned how Yaya Diaby, they're expecting big things. Watch out for him. Watch out for him. Uh, he, you know, we saw from the, uh, the, if you haven't seen it and you're in locked on listening to locked on bucks, you have to, uh, you got to watch the current from the Buccaneers team. And in that second episode, they kind of talk about the draft and there's a quick mention of Yaya about how he like wants to be a leader, right? Like he wants to know how he can be a captain on this team. Like he's pushing for that, not in like a, in a jerk way. He just wants to know like, what are the steps that I have to take to be a captain on this team? So, Besides the fact that Todd Bowles has called him Optimus Prime and he looks like just a, an unreal specimen, this dude has been hyped up. So it was a huge blow to hear that his name was the guy getting carted off the field. It's amazing news to hear that it's just a high ankle sprain. For some perspective, Will Anderson Jr., uh, a rookie last year for the Texans, highly regarded player. Uh, he had a high ankle sprain in week 14. He missed two weeks. Now, A, there are different degrees of this. B, that was in season, so you're rushing to get back, right? But Yaya Diaby isn't built like a normal human being. We have five-plus weeks to get to week one, four to six weeks. For him to be towards the six-week element and like miss that game right now based on what we know, I would be shocked, absolutely shocked. So we don't, at least I don't think this is going to affect week one. And that's all that matters, right? He's he's going to miss training camp time. He's going to miss preseason. Not ideal, mostly on the training camp portion. Don't really care about the preseason games too much. Didn't want him playing that much anyway. Um, but, you know, maybe he's going to, my hope is that like week the week entering the commander's game, he's practicing like normal. That would be four weeks away and he can be prepared. Um, so man, it's a huge scare because as I just mentioned, if you think about life without Yaya, it's ooh, buddy. I mean, you're talking about because Randy Gregory is, we don't know. Uh, does not look like he's gonna be a member of the Buccaneers. So you're you're relying on Anthony Nelson, Joe Tryonshanka, Chris Braswell, Marquise Watts, Jose Ramirez. I mean, I, I certainly in those those first like few names, I like them, but they're no. I mean, a lot of them are kind of like better run guys than attack the quarterback guy. Uh, Yaya can kind of do both, and not to mention he's a starter for your team, and. You already lost Sue Opeta, so you just don't want to keep that trend of, like, losing people. So it seems like a huge bullet was dodged, and um, I think Buccaneers fans can rest easy knowing that at worst-case scenario, he missed the Commanders game. So uh, I just I, – I, I have a good feeling that he'll, he'll be just fine in, in the big picture. Yeah, well, and, and as you mentioned, that Randy Gregory absence is even more glaring than it was before. And it, it's not like Gregory was going to come in and have, you know, eight or ten sacks or anything like that. But, you know, he was going to be a, a, a heavily used piece of the rotation. And, you know, uh, somebody that they were relying on, and he's completely AWOL, it, it might honestly be too late to do anything as far as bringing in another guy you know, through free agency. Of course, we'll keep an eye on you know all these other teams that are cutting down their rosters to 53 there might be somebody that becomes available seems like there's always you know a, a small handful of surprise cuts of of guys that get picked up quickly and become impact players but 
you know, I I'm just saying Todd Bowles is is an incredibly intelligent human being and he finds ways to scheme pressure and scheme blitzes using all different kinds of options. I wouldn't be opposed to Servasier Dennis being on the field with just the the job of go get the quarterback. KJ's in the middle, Levante's in the middle, they can take care of some things. Just Go get the quarterback. We saw him do it plenty at Pitt, and it, it might be kind of a solid fit as part of that rotation if Yaya isn't all the way back by week one. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that you would have to really break the emergency glass if we kind of get there, especially considering that KJ is most likely not going to be an every-down linebacker like we have seen with, you know, Devin – and uh, Levante and even Quan, like it's been a while since we've kind of seen uh, this like matchup dependent option because I can see in kind of like, you know, maybe him getting pulled off of some third downs, teams that are very pass heavy, he might get less snaps. You think that Savas, I mean, Bowles has even said it like Savasier is going to play this year. He's going to have a role and a package for him. What that looks like, we're trying to figure that out. We've also talked on here before about just loading up the field with a bunch of secondary pieces. So I think there's going to be a lot of creativity there. And something we know about Todd Bowles, he'll get the, – the sack numbers will be there. We know that. But what does he have to negotiate on the back end to make those sacks happen? There's some reward, and then there's risk. And in doing that, sometimes you bleed out – you know, big time plays and it, it, it kind of hurts you or it equals out or whatever it might be. So still, even with Yaya 100% healthy, the linebacker group over there is, is suspect. Uh, they, they don't have until Yaya maybe proves it this year. They don't have a dude, like a guy one-on-one who is going to mess you up. If you don't double me, that is the one number one missing piece of, of this Buccaneers team. And as I've said 90 times before, I think it's the difference between winning the division and winning a Super Bowl, right? Not saying that, you know, it does, they are as currently constructed a playoff caliber team. You know, they can make it as far as the NFC Championship. It just, I just feel like somewhere when you get into the top four teams, and you're looking around at who's there, you know, you think about the Niners, you think you think about some of these teams and who they got over there. I don't know. It that that position seems mightily important. All right. Well, Evan is going to give us his top three training camp stars so far. That's coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks. <laughs> I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But with the playoffs having wound down, we get fewer games and the sports just aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Right now, the Los Angeles Dodgers are the favorites to win the World Series of plus 320, while the Tampa Bay Rays have struggled and they are sitting at plus 29,000. If you would rather get in on some NFL odds early on, the Chiefs and Niners are tied atop the Super Bowl odds at plus 600, while the Bucks have somehow dropped to plus 6,500 and are sitting at plus 310 to win the NFC South. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Wrapping things up here on a WTSP edition of the Locked On Bucks podcast. And all right, let's shift this over to what I wanted to talk with you about yesterday before my internet so rudely ruined my basically entire day. Uh, but we're about a week into training camp now, and I'm curious to know who's caught your eye. So we are looking for Evan Klosky's top three training camp performers so far. And let's start with the number one guy that has stood out to you. Ooh, 
this one's an obvious one. Jalen McMillan. Yes. Um, yes. Wow. You know, Baker Mayfield went on NFL Network the other day saying the hype is real. He is um, – he doesn't play like a rookie. He not – even beyond that, he gets to sit in a room with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. You kidding me? Those two, uh, to learn from them, they going back to that, like, 21 Rams offense, those are some of the things that I think Liam Cohen can deploy. And having him as sort of the – what I love about the offense and what's very clear from hearing from the players is that they're going to walk to the line of scrimmage and have answers. Last year, not so much. It was Dave gave them a play, run the play. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the Bucs never scored a draw, a touchdown first drive of the game because typically scripted plays offensively and defensively, when you're relying on film so much, you know what's coming. Then it's like how you know Dave. I thought did a pretty good job of handling some curveballs and games and adjusting. Liam, Liam is going to arm these guys with all the answers. It's up to the players to really read the coverages and make the right call. And when you got Mike, Chris Baker, um, you know, even like Tristan, like a bunch of these guys who have a lot of game experience. They're typically going to make the right call, and that's only going to help a dude like Jalen McMillan, who benefits from the gravity that Mike Evans and Chris Godwin force. So this dude has been awesome, and he's certainly in your fantasy leagues worth a low flyer uh, at, at the bottom of your drafts. You know, if you're a snake draft, make sure you grab him in maybe the final five rounds, auction draft, maybe tuck away a couple of bucks to snag him, but I, I don't know if he's like, I'm not saying he's going to be a 1000 yard receiver this season, but there are going to be some pop games and there are going to be maybe some plays where maybe it's five, five receptions for 35 yards, but he picks up like two huge third downs. That's kind of how I envision his role this year. He's going to complement this offense and he's going to make impactful plays. Even if he doesn't stuff the stat sheet every game. Yeah, you for sure want him in best ball leagues. Like if if you have in those those leagues are deep, so make sure that you target him in in those. But yeah, I've I've been pumping Jalen McMillan's tires on this show all week long, and uh, I have no regrets. I'm going to continue to do it as long as he continues to do what he's been doing. But who are the other two guys that have really jumped out to you so far through what what are we now seven eight practices in? KJ Britt, number two. And okay. uh, um, I don't even want to talk about really the schematic stuff. Um, this dude is, he's a dog. Like mm -hmm. old school linebacker, get in your face. I'm going to talk trash. These are championship caliber guys. Guys who are hold everybody accountable. He's going to wear a C on his chest. He's a leader. Okay. And and he is um he he causes a uh, he he causes hell out there and you know scraps possibly fights but he does it in a sense of like you better bring it like i'm out here giving it 120 like your your 90 is terrible like, like he pushes his teammates it's i'm so impressed with him commanding the field, you always see his presence felt. To me, I'm not even like looking at what plays are happening and where he is. And if he got, you know, he overran a tackle or messed up in coverage, I don't care. He's making an impact on this team and he's setting the tone. Those guys are important. I like, I like the bold prediction too, that he's going to have a C on his chest. Cause I'm sitting here thinking like, well, if he's got one, then is it Vita or Levante or Antoine that are going to lose theirs? And I don't see any of them losing it. So uh, I'll be interested to see if, it, you know, of course, I don't know. What's the well, limit? Not, well, he, like he would just take nine? away. De he would take away Devins. I, oh, that's true. I guess they did have four on the defensive side of the ball last year. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I like it. And then uh, one last guy that's that's really caught your eye in, in training camp so far. Uh, Tyke Smith. I think yes. that the 
the buzz around him when, when Todd Bowles is saying like, he knows everything. He's acting like a, like a long time vet out there. Mm-hmm. They're throwing him in with the ones at nickel, uh, Antoine, uh, Jordan, just a lot of guys really giving him praise of like, like when I, you know, essentially like when I was a rookie, I didn't understand all this stuff, but because, you know, he's uh, again, going back to the current, uh, a huge film nerd, film rat, and he just comes across as someone who belongs for a rookie like that. And by all accounts is taking advantage of his opportunity. 100% he's going to have, um, he's going to be on the field in some way, shape and form. We're going to see Tyke Smith, but just again, another like where J Mac was more of like performance based, not that he's not doing all the good stuff behind the scenes as well. These other two guys are just like really well put together football players. And when I watch them, it's like, yeah, the, you know, these are, these are dudes that I'm riding with. Um, so Tyke Smith is another guy who is, uh, we, we were very optimistic and high on entering training camp. Certainly mm-hmm. when he was drafted, we understood it. Uh, now um, I, I've, I've liked what I've seen and, and he's, Certainly, uh, there's been a confirmation bias in how we've performed up to this this point. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of Locked On Bucks. Evan, what do you have on tap over at 10 Tampa Bay and at 10TampaBay.com? We're right in the midst of uh, training camp, so make sure that you head to, as you mentioned, the website, uh, OTT platform, 10TampaBay.com, uh, 10TampaBay Plus. And then uh, also, we're kind of in the – the midst still of, of race season. We're in the uh, the wake of a wild trade deadline. Head over to Locked on Rays, and I talk extensively with my dudes over there about what happened post-trade deadline. So that's that's what we got cooking. And, again, you can hit me up at Eklosky, WTSP. I'll, I'll answer you. Just be nice. Be respectful. If you're a jerk, I ain't, I ain't answering. All Damn, right. Right now. Yeah. Check out everything on 10 Tampa Bay and at 10 Tampa Bay.com. Check out my work over at BucksNation.com. Make sure you are subscribed on YouTube with those notifications turned on so you know when I go live on Friday. Uh, and of course, all your favorite podcast platforms. Become a locked on Bucks insider. Go to join subtext.com slash locked on Bucks or click the link in the show notes. And of course, follow on Twitter at locked on Bucks at JRCO underscore Bucks at E Klosky W. T-S-P. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. Want to thank you so much for joining us right here on Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.